friends welcome to the fourth and the last part of introduction to adrian rich's poetry we have already discussed the kind of range she has provided and the way she has grown over the years as a poet and she deals with a rich variety of topics and brings them together speaks for women speaks for humanity speaks for the disenfranchised and in this particular lecture we are going to focus on the last few decades of her writing and how this this uh, in this period also she uh, she continued to evolve as a poet and as a human being her emphasis on the social conditions of private lives has been a mainstay in rich's later work which often explores the influence of contemporary world events the school among the ruins poems 2002 to uh, 2002 to 2004 that was published in 2004 which won the national book critics circle award attempts to capture the myriad events that have defined the beginning of the 21st century the predominantly short prose poems in the school among the ruins are free verse meditations on the displacement of exiles the encroachment of modernity on human dignity and the effects of america's war against terror on the state side psyche now just try and see that she enters into 21st century with this uh, kind of uh, awakening of the things that are happening around and uh, this whole issue of the displacement of exiles simply because of the kinds of wars that have been taking place and uh, how modernity in the name of modernity uh, there has been encroachments on human dignity which means uh, that power gets more centralized and uh, uh, human freedom you know it comes under a kind of a threat and she also is a very a very skeptical about what america has popularly called uh, its war against terror because uh, how it has uh, had an effect on the american mindset and at the same time america's self righteousness she brings it into question now one of the critics megan o'rourke in art forum or uh, wrote felt the collection veered too much into rhetoric but other critics found the juxtaposition of cell phone and television dialogue stunningly effective now this television dialogue and uh, and cell phone she has used as uh, the kind of devices through which she wants to draw the attention to what is happening in the beginning of 20 uh, 21st century whereby you see um, uh, the problems are becoming more global in nature and their impact also is is there can be felt everywhere and she is not that optimistic about how america as a nation is handling them which is 2007 collection telephone ringing in the labyrinth was a 24th however since the mid 50s rich has conceived of her poetry as a long process rather than a series of separate books telephone ringing in the labyrinth continues to use open forms including notebook like fragments the book as a whole noted lee sharkey in the beloyed poetry journal is concerned with dissolution and disappearance the rich uh, that the rich persona who for half a century has been engaged in a continual process of undoing her own certainty certainties owns up to how those certainties have blinded her now this this is very interesting to note that we we have seen we have uh, so far discussed how uh, she grew evolved as a poet and how radical she was but then you know she's not some person who would tie herself to a certain kind of opinion and uh, would never change in this uh collection the telephone ringing as the this critic has pointed out she 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 uh, does uh, she does a kind of you know uh, a kind of self reflection whereby she questions about all those certainties she questions all those certainties that she had carried in her mind for decades 
and she sort of you know she defines this experience as dissolution of the kind of self that she had created during this entire period layering images and utilizing stripped down line help contribute the new still more dif uh, difficult perspective she was achieved uh, she has achieved now again you can see that when it comes to the form she continually experiments we have seen that earlier also she has um, experimented with the language she has uh, uh, used parts from notebooks and other things so as goes the content and uh, she she redefines she redefines the kind of way in which she presents it now sharki noted though rich allows no point of resolution in the poem beyond juxtaposed images of cultural environment and personal dissolution so it's uh, i um, we can see that you know, she she is not coming up with some kind of uh, decisions or some kind of uh, judgment on certain things but she is somebody who is continually in a process of uh, creation and at the same time bringing into question what she has held for certain always but it doesn't mean that if she brings those things into question uh, uh, they become meaningless in fact they acquire a deeper meaning and they serve a pur purpose to a certain extent so that things further can go on to what what she does is that uh, she juxtaposes multiple images from uh, the cultural environment and her own personal experience and in that by doing that you know we, she keeps her poems open ended whereby the reader may Uh, receive meanings or uh, the way they 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 might interpret it she is not basically imposing any specific kind of meaning of what she does in a poetry so we may see that through over 60 years of public introspection and examination of society and self adrian rich has chronicled her journey in poetry and prose she says i began as an american optimist uh she commented in credo of a passionate skeptic a white a critical one formed by our racial legacy and by the vietnam war i became an american skeptic not as to the long search for justice and dignity which is part of human history but in the light of my nation's leading role in demoralizing and destabilizing that search here at home and around the world perhaps just such a passionate skepticism neither cynical nor nihilistic is the ground for continuing therefore we may see here very clearly that how outspoken and how honest she is when it comes to her writing so she says she traces her growth as a as a poet as an american optimist and how uh, in all the books that she has published she points out that how gradually she became an american skeptic and how she does not at all approve of what america is doing as a nation in demoralizing and destabilizing this kind of search so you may see that she she did not hold any bars uh, she did not she did not uh, try to be politically correct in uh, every possible manner but in fact she brought into question what is being what is happening around her in the environment not just particularly in, uh, in america politically socially culturally but whatever is happening around the world she saw it and she questioned all those things which were meant to be not questioned thank you so the, uh, in the end the source for this uh, lecture has been primarily the information i have taken from poetry foundation and interpretation has been mine own thank you for your patience thank you